Hello, everybody. My name is Len Bayer. And today I'm talking to a Renaissance man who doesn't concern himself with the law of, hu of humans, but rather with the laws of the universe and our place in it. He's an author of uh, an iconic book, Project Soul Catcher, and someone uh, whom I'm delighted to call my friend. Without further ado, Robert Duncan. Well, thank you. That was a wonderful, unique introduction I've never heard before. I will um, say it hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, Len, Len and I know each other from uh, several events, and, uh, um, and it's good to be on your show, your podcast, and um, you know, hopefully, we can cover some new material and and some offer some new ideas and suggestions for those who are being unfortunately targeted and, and tortured without uh, the media or the government acknowledging it for the most part. All right. Uh, last time uh, we met in person, we were on Danny Jones' um, podcast called Concrete Podcast in Florida in October of last year. That show made some serious waves uh, throughout the interwebs. Uh, you are one of the most sought out speakers on the subject of cybernetics and cognitive warfare. And I understand that recently you made a life-changing decision to leave Facebook and join Twitter, which uh, not so long ago has been liberated by Elon Musk. Uh, from the shackles of state propaganda. So tell us about this transition of yours and what was the straw that broke the camel's back? Oh, the, yeah, that's the thing. There were, there were many episodes. Uh, you know, I, I've been harassed over, you know, insignificant comments that I, I made out of context. And shut down, put in prison. You know, I felt like a political prisoner. What I have to say can save lives, but they don't care about that. They're just cared about some off-the-cuff comment. Um, lately, it's just been, it's a machine. It, 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 it cust there's no customer service. You can't contact a human being. And uh, it's become a political, politicized propaganda machine. And um anyway um so i moved to twitter to focus my energies and my alias since my name was taken many times my alias is tim as in timothy underscore e as in emerson underscore lord the loaf bringer those one who cares about humanity <laughs> um so I'll, if you want to follow me, uh, search for me, uh, uh, please be my guest. I want to build a, a good audience there and uh, share my knowledge in sound bites. I'm, I'm verified, so I think I can write longer posts, uh, is what they said, of the, you're verified. But I'm new to the platform, so I'm just learning how to use it. Yeah, uh, I, I want to officially welcome you to Twitter. Uh, you'll you'll get followers, and I and I uh, um, uh, confirm that that team at team underscore e underscore lord is indeed Robert's uh, handle on Twitter. So please subscribe, please follow, and uh, it is a slightly different platform than Facebook, but uh, I think you're gonna like it. Uh, it has its own quirks, yet some limitations, but you can do longer tweets, uh, tweets and uh, uh, serial tweet, tweets and, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I noticed that lately you have been um, um, talking about uh, uh, an area that I have um, a personal and professional interest in, and, and this is a... Um, um, and the an aspect of central nervous system that concerns the propagation of electromagnetic signals 
uh, throughout the brain. Uh, tell me, tell us about your twit and, and maybe we can uh, have a little discussion. Sure, I was following through with some theoretical work and I've worked on AMNs, artificial neural networks, and uh, try to bring the applied theory, try to prove that uh, certain things are possible. And the latest uh, research I was doing uh, from a biophysics point of view was what happens during demyelinization of the brain cells. Now, I wanna break a common myth, and that is uh, we only use 10% of our brain. Now, the person who said that and came up with that uh, makes it sound like we're not using 90%. The actual reason they said that is because 90% of it are, is composed of glial cells in the brain, which act, they don't know all the specifics, but the main uh, purpose of them is to act as an insulator for conductance. <clears throat> and uh, so I was doing some uh, simulations of it, what would happen if you started demyelinating the axons of, uh, of nerve cells, neurons in the brain. And what I found was it lowers the threshold of which an external signal can be inserted uh, in a timed way to send the signal forward. Now in the microcircuits and macrocircuits of the brain, it's opening a window of opportunity to literally insert a, a new personality, uh, really. Um, so the theory goes, what causes demyelinization of cells? And, uh, you know, a number of drugs can do it. Um, free radicals, a lot of stress. And the big one that I thought was interesting is sleep deprivation. That is what all TIs, brainwashing methods, incorporate. Uh, so they're more, the target is more susceptible to, for example, electromagnetic neuroweapons or to suggestion. And so many TIs go through horrible sleep deprivation and it causes free radicals, it causes uh, the stress hormones, which then causes demyelination. So it's a theory of why uh, that type of torture is done to the targets. I think. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, the the one aspect that you haven't uh, mentioned in the uh, process of demyelinization is neuroinflammation, and it's of course it, it it's connected uh, to the uh, um, overproduction of uh, free radicals, but the exposure to directed energy. Um, itself uh, produces demyelinization and neuroinflammation, as well as many neurodegenerative diseases um, uh, do. But what, um, and, and myelin, uh, let's explain to our listeners that you have a neuron, a uh, cell body, and then you have an extension, an exon, and then at the end, you have a synapse that connects to, to the next uh, 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 neuron. And so this exon is uh, um, pre predominantly forms the white matter. So, so the neuron cell bodies are in the gray matter, and the white matter is uh, predominantly those exons. And the, those exons are um, isolated. The isolating material that that uh, uh, allows the electromagnetic signal to to travel at a uh, uh, sufficiently uh, uh, speed is is the lipid like material myelin. So. So I actually have some personal um, um, experience with this. I measured, I, I went through a um, test called QEG uh, with uh, uh, SW Loretta. So it basically measures me measures how electromagnetic signals originated in various nodes within the brain travel 
um, uh, throughout the throughout the brain, and in every network, I uh, uh, the slowing down of the propagation of the signals have been have been detected, and as you said, in order to insert that uh, spike, that signal, that that the electromagnetic. Uh, um, signal corresponding with a message or an action or or some kind of sensory uh, wow, sensory cool. effect, you have to hit that window. Um, you have to be you have to um, be ahead of the uh, brain's own signal, and so the re uh, refractory period is in the normal brain after one signal goes through and before the next one it's ready for the next signal in normal brain is only two milliseconds but if you slow it down that window opens up and it's easier for the um uh, external signal to be inserted this is this is this is the working model would you agree with that? That that this is this is uh, uh, this model makes sense. Oh, it makes it makes a lot of sense, um, and it's also why those like yourself that have been uh, diagnosed and studied for Havana syndrome show mild traumatic brain injury, and I hear that all the time, uh, and that would explain it through the EM energy. Both can cause concussion-like symptoms as well as it progresses you to the next stage of being able to autocorrelate, biocorrelate, brain print the, uh, the subject or the target to insert uh, the, uh, the, the right frequencies in the window of opportunity. And that window sounds very, very short, two milliseconds. And let's say if you slow it down, okay, it's five milliseconds, 10 milliseconds. It's still a very short period of time. Do we have technology that works at that speed that that can um, read and write literally in real time in these tiny little windows? Sure. I mean, yes, if the were microwave or ultra high frequency radio waves easily done uh the brain only operates at the speed of sound while we can do much faster things with uh, with signals but i don't know that i'm not convinced uh, what you said is necessarily fully true on a macro scale if you entrain a brain through longer wavelength signals, it still will alter the natural brain signaling process. So I don't know if you have to insert it in that two millimeter gap, is what I'm, I'm trying to get on. Okay. Um, but I got to do you know some more studies on it. Right. I, I I actually had to correct because I responded to your message on Twitter and I I was just writing off my memory and I thought oh I think the re refractory period is fifty milliseconds and then I looked it up and it's actually only two milliseconds so this so this this time window is 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 really important but I understand your your comment about the entrainment and 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 uh, uh, synchronization with external signals yeah. Um, something you have to consider is these weapons work at very long distance. And so the speed of light around the Earth is a tenth of a second. It's a hundred milliseconds. Uh, so for it to entrain, you would think that it would have to be a longer wavelength or some other sequence uh, that doesn't require precise timing of two milliseconds root to the root and back reading and writing um so anyway i'll i'll come up with a better explanation but uh, that's that's kind of where i stand now this is a very important conversation to have not only for target individuals for for uh for neuroscientists and this technology obviously will um change the course of neurotechnology of psychiatry 
will change the course of history, society, um, wow. our understanding of free will. It's just going to um, uh, change yeah. pretty much everything. And, and we're on the precipice of this change, literally yeah. on the precipice. Yeah, um, now you play an important role here in enlightening the population as to what we face. You know, it truly is an existential threat of our way of life and everything we believe in. And for the media sh to be shut down and we're told not to talk about it and Facebook bans us or whatever, that's horrible. I mean, this is, we're talking about everything we care about as humans. And, uh, so yeah, it's a very important topic. Yes. Uh, another aspect of uh, 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 the central nervous system that we are not often um, um, mentioning in this in this uh, uh, um, in this model of uh, of uh, around this technology is um, something called blood brain barrier, um, um, and just for 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 our listeners, this is a is a very specific. It, it's a border between the circulation and the the internal brain um environment that is very strictly uh, regulated that it only allows molecules of certain size and certain configuration to pass certain ions to pass certain drugs to pass it allows nanotechnology nanomolecules to pass that blood brain barrier and you can also use indirected energy and ultrasound you can Kind of shake up the the blood brain barrier and open it up for larger molecules. Um, That's correct. What, yeah. Yeah, what 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 importance uh, 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 do you think it has um, um, for um, for the modern technology? The fact that that the blood brain barrier can be uh, opened up, can can be uh, uh, the permeability can be modulated. And that the nanomolecules and nanomachines can cross the blood-brain barrier. Yeah, you you've given one aspect of why you want to do it uh, is through uh, magnetoproteins or nanotech. Or I doubt they can open it up quite as far as uh, for you know um, smart dust or something like that, but. Um, but you can think of the medical uses, or at least how it would be uh, advertised to the public, and that's um, we can get drugs into the brain quicker. We can, um, you know, there, there's a variety of good uses medically, but the we focus on what we know is going on and the evil uses, and we don't talk about that. I mean, uh, <laughs> If we can come up with evil uses, you know they're already doing it. Uh, that's, that's a fact. I I often wonder uh, about these public intellectuals that um, talk about the cognitive liberty and cognitive pro uh, uh, privacy, and and they advocate for these uh, uh, new laws and new rules and and new ethics around this. Uh, um, technology, but they shy away from people like us who are actually victims of the nefarious uh, uh, use of this technology. It, it, there's some kind of cognitive dissonance uh, that's going on um, because they're happy to discuss advances of, of neurotech, but once it becomes about particular individuals human being, living, breathing uh, 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 fellow humans that are suffering from the from the dual use, uh, uh, nefarious use of uh, neurotech, the conversation stops. What is um, it? It becomes personalized and then they feel responsible in a sense. It's too much responsibility. You mean it's already happening and I didn't know? Uh, and I think the... Um, they also, the TIs, many of them are considered the, due to conspiracy theory, the uncool kids club, you know, uh, 
And we don't want to be talking to the tinfoil hat wearers, you know, that'll ruin our reputation. So I think there's some of that psychology going on and why they avoid it when there are there's so many voices crying out the same message of what's going on, but they the voices are ignored and it's just written off by a pseudoscience of psychology field, you know, practice in psychology. But um that's my take on it, Lynn. Uh, anyway. yeah. uh, one thing I would like to add, I recently ran a uh, an informal poll on Twitter and I asked people, do you think there are um, social media accounts that pretend to be targeted individuals and make claims that make us look uh, mentally off? The intentional, this intentional... A sort of campaign to um yeah it's psyops exactly it's psyops. information right. there right it's done you know it's counterintelligence it's done by all the agencies to try to hide secrets and the truth and so um uh, you know even lawyers do it in the courtroom you discredit the witness you know and then you uh you go on and say their testimony can't be used. They're not in the right mind. And as soon as you call someone stupid or insane, those are discrediting words. Uh, we humans naturally think, oh, don't believe this person. Don't listen to them. So we've been conditioned in that sense. Um, and, uh, you know, the game will be played the way they're trained to play. It. We just got to come up with better ways to express our message uh, very coherently and soundly uh, in a simple enough format so others can understand it. And it's going to be a slow progress of understanding, but I really think by the year 2025, we will have met, uh, made a milestone. Uh, and most of the, you know, a certain percentage of, of the world's population will know these weapons exist and they're being used. And then our hope is a moratorium or a, a, a new uh, United Nation treaty will be signed and you can't be using these uh, weapons anymore. Now, it doesn't help those who are already damaged and whether reparations will ever be made to those people, but um, at least we stopped it, the suffering and the torture for future generations. And you got to feel good about that. Uh, this has definitely become um, a theme of my life. I, 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 as much as I, as I'm disappointed that I've been chosen to be a target, it made it gave my life meaning. Uh, I, I, I feel responsible for the millions of people around the world, uh, and I appreciate just just the overwhelming support that I receive. Um, I never asked for it. I never asked for any publicity or or uh, to be in this position, but life cho chooses you and you just have to answer the call. And that's 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 what I did. I, I'm proud of you. You stepped up to the plate. Many remain suffering in silence. And, uh, you know, that's their choice. But uh, more voices, louder the message, and eventually can break through what they call the 8% barrier of people who know. And then, you know, the, the Pentagon says they're worried about that because then a successful revolution can occur or violence. But um, so they have to make sure they can blame it on another enemy or aliens. I think the new thing, the aliens are doing it to everybody. Uh, you know, whatever the propaganda. Right. Is. Whoever is the, the, the topic of the, the enemy of the, of the, day. Man. I think, uh, I think right now with the, uh, um, uh, report made public by Washington times, now it's China, and China has been bragging about this technology for a while. But now we have this report um, detailed in this uh, Washington Times uh, article that actually um, adopted this uh, new terminology 
uh, uh, first offered by Robert McQuaid, uh, who's a who's a uh, uh, you know an important thinker and 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 uh, advises NATO on the uh, um, emerging technology. He offered this uh, term neurostrike, which I think will replace Havana syndrome, even though they're not exactly the same. What do you think about this term and this sort of this? new Chinese revelations. I I never liked the term Havana syndrome. That's something the news came up with because that's when some CIA agents or police diplomats got attacked, you know, with these symptoms. But it's been <laughs> the public's been crying about this since pretty much the 1970s onward, even earlier than that, some of them. And so it's to the public, it's nothing new. But when you're government figures are attacked all of a sudden it's a big deal and it's like i this has been going on to our government even further than they'll admit it havana syndrome you know it's just a crappy term it's misleading i do like neuro strike that sounds like a weapon a neuro weapon you know or set of tactics and uh, set of technologies that attack the nervous system and the brain so far better to start calling it neurostrike rather than Havana syndrome. I, I agree with you fully. Although they're not completely identical, neurostrike is, is a form of an attack. A Havana syndrome would be a medical condition. So let's yes. say if a concussion were neuro neurostrike, then Havana syndrome would be MTBI. The, the, those are the, that, that's the framework. Uh, uh, and we need, and the, and then we need something like uh, neurostrike syndrome. Or military already actually has a term uh, for this uh, condition. It's called UPI. It stands for unconventionally acquired uh, brain injury. And 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 this, uh, so so the military medicine is not a stranger to neurostrike syndrome. Um, it just uh, it, it just never been. Um, yeah, they, they, they're not putting the pieces of the puzzle together. The neural strike can cause Havana syndrome. You know, we got to connect the right, pieces. Right. But we will we'll talk about it. We'll discuss it. We'll make these important points. Um, and I think you're right, the 8%. Where do you think we are right now? Are we at 4% awareness, 5% awareness? I can't judge. I think we're just reaching the threshold between, it, depending on how the alien, uh, you know, hoax goes for them to slow down the spread of knowledge. But um, I would say we're at about six to seven percent, and so I think we're very close. Yeah, that's uh, and then a major pandemic will be planned or something, and the new world order will take charge and. You know, the attention will go away from these neural weapons. So maybe they'll find a cure. Elon Musk neural link. Oh, if you get a brain chip in your head, all of a sudden you're cured from these problems, neurological problems. So there are a lot of different uh, chess moves that they can make to try to cover their butts right now. Uh, people do need to realize that news is a weapon. So uh, as we are progressing in our conversation. And once things are really getting interesting and 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 the public is paying attention, there's always some kind of news story that distracts public's attention. That's why I'm saying news is a weapon. It's a weapon of destruction. And the and the new war, it's a culture war. It, it's a it's a whose culture will win who whose culture will dominate so when they say in when, when uh, um um the uh, uh, signing the recent book by uh Nito, uh uh farahi uh i'm probably mispronouncing her name uh it uh, the uh, battle for your brain that's it this is a literal meaning of the um, modern cognitive warfare. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, you know, the CIA's motto and their psyops is uh, 
win the hearts and minds of your enemies. You know, this is literally winning their minds or causing a heart attack if they can't. You know, electrical signals throughout the body you can cause all sorts of ailments. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I appreciate you bringing this all out into light, Len. You know, I know this is awesome. Yes. Um, if uh, we have time for one last question, and it's not really related to um, uh, targeting, but it is um, something that uh, I've been paying attention lately. Uh, you know who Stephen Greer is, and he is, uh, uh, he, um, he is a, 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 a somebody who specializes in uh, UFO uh, um, 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 subject. But he also talks about the new form of energy, which is not new. He uh, he just uh, released a documentary called "The Lost The Lost Century," and in which he talks about uh, something called zero point energy or quantum vacuum. It's the the sort of the fabric of the universe itself, uh, in which particles appear and disappear and they carry uh, electromagnetic charge and a lot of energy so if you can tap into it you literally have free energy for the entire planet that will solve climate you know, problems poverty etc 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 what do you wh what do you think about I have comments about that one we're on the brink of nuclear fusion reactions clean energy so i think that's the way to go but uh, to the zero point energy, while we know there's energy in space time itself, uh, due to the virtual particles you were talking about, um, uh, the problem is if you could harness it, you're creating a new kind of pollution, and that's time pollution, time and gravity pollution. So even if you could harness it, you're going to create new problems in the future, <laughs> in the past, possibly small ripples of time space going on. Uh, so I don't know how realistic it is and how far away we are from the true zero point energy harvesting. Something you would need to do if you wanted to do warp drive, you know, something like that. Uh, but I just haven't heard any breakthroughs yet, uh, you know, serious breakthroughs. So. I think connecting the two topics between mind control and uh, zero point energy is a little bit of a uh, less of these are two completely different uh, topics. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree that I, I, I don't see direct connection, but I'm sure somehow they're related and we just, we just have not uh, seen these uh, 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 consequences because everything Everything has consequences. Nothing is a hundred percent safe. Nothing is hundred uh, percent a perfect solution. So, will you yeah. always pay some kind of price? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, very true. Yeah. And you know, I philosophize about ordering chaos. You know, I'm not sure what we are. <laughs> We're a chaotic system on the edge of order or an ordered system on the edge of chaos. But, uh, uh, it's like looking at clouds. Everyone sees different images in clouds. Well, that's just your image recognizers going up, but we perceive order. Well, the clouds don't perceive that. They're chaos. They're just randomly formed. So it makes you wonder if our very definition of light is just the human perception of order. I'm going a little deep there, but that's my philosophy. <laughs> but this is this is this is extremely this is extremely irrelevant relevant because we all need to understand that we we perceive reality in 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 the limitations of this perception are located in our in 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 the way our central nervous system is structured. So. We might, we might not be even equipped to understand the nature of reality. So yeah, this is very, this is very important. 
And that creates an opportunity for artificial intelligence to control our perception of reality through sensory input, through emotional input. I mean, we are walking amygdalas, we are just we emotional animals, and we need to understand that. So yes, your comment is extremely relevant. Uh, Robert, I, 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 I really enjoyed this conversation. I um, would you like a, a lot of people follow will follow you on Twitter now that they know that uh, 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 you said bye bye to Facebook. Um, and a lot of people look up uh, to you as a thinker and a and a, um, a person who makes difference every day you you the, the targeted indiv individuals uh reach out to you um people who are interested in in uh, this cybernetic warfare reach out to you what do you have a message for your followers and people in general yeah uh, thank you for calling it cybernetic warfare not cyber warfare that's different cybernetic warfare cybernetic torture that's what it is uh and so i studied the melding the evolution of intelligence through machines biological brains and artificial intelligence and try to explain to the public what's been done uh, this isn't futuristic technology and aliens didn't give it to us um i want to give lead with a message of hope that i do think this is going to be revealed finally by the government whether we say another country has been doing it the whole time, well, that's the propaganda machine. Don't know how that's going to unfold. Um, and to hang in there, you know, if you harm anybody or yourself, all you you're letting them win. You know, the struggle, life not well, life wasn't meant to be easy. Uh, my family motto of Duncan means learn to suffer. So <laughs> I was actually born into. Uh, a clan, but that was their motto. Um, so anyway, I, I hope to hear from you all. And uh, you guys have a, a great a year, month, day, however long it is. <laughs> thank you, Robert. And uh, thank you for being on this show. Uh, I hope uh, we'll have uh, uh, more opportunities to talk in the future and have some really good news for all the people's people who are suffering from this uh, inhumane technology. Thank you very much, Robert. Have a good day.